Hi everybody, Ellen here. Today I come to you guys with my December wrap up, meaning, you know, the last wrap up of 2018, which is really exciting. Um, it definitely went better with the reading than it has done the last few months because I've been in a reading slump. I still am, but I'm definitely hoping for a better start of 2019. So I ended up reading 11 books this month and only two of them were audiobooks and the rest I read myself um, and didn't listen to. So yeah, let's get to it. So we're going out of chronological order here. Um, but technically the last book I finished of the year was The Serpent's Shadow by Jordan. This is the third and final book in the Kane Chronicles. And in this one we follow Sadie and Carter and they have to save the world, which is like a very well used theme in Rick Riordan's books. Um, but they are actually sort of descendants of these Egyptian gods. So they get some... They get in some shitload of trouble and they have to learn to use their magic and that's really hard because they're both beginners and it's just, it's a really really fun series. It's definitely not my favourite series by him by any means but I definitely feel like the third and final book was a very good um, wrap up of it all and I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. Of course it can't be a wrap up without at least a few Brandon Sanderson books. So I read The Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Mistborn Second Era series. So this one takes place a couple of hundred years later after the original the original trilogy. So you follow different characters, but it is the same um, world and it's the same magic system and everything like that. Um, but in this one we follow Wax and Wayne and they are sort of kind of like trying to get people to stay out of trouble. They sort of solves crimes, um, but they're no, by no means cops or anything like that. So Wax is actually sort of retired from this work because he's a lord now and he has to take care of his household and his responsibilities. But then one really hard case comes up on his table and he decides to once again join up with Wayne and he tried to solve this sort of mystery. And I really liked the main characters and it was so much fun. It was a quick read. I love the magic system still and the world, even though a lot of it changed. And I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. As you may have noticed, there's a lot of books already really, really high in this wrap up. So, I mean, it was very good books this month, to say the least. Um, but then I also read Spit and Flock by Erin Hunter. This is the first book in the new series called Brave Lands. And once again, this was a book I really, really enjoyed. Um, so we did get to meet um, three different main characters. We have the lion, we have the elephant, and we have a baboon. And I will not say their names because you only know them in Swedish and that would, might confuse people. <laughs> um, but these are the three main characters that we get to follow. We get to follow their lives and how different they live and what they, you know, we get to know their background and what they've been a part of and everything like that. And uh, the storyline is pretty much that there's really um, strict rules that you have to follow living in this place uh, but one lion actually ends up breaking sort of the code and he kills another lion and that puts everything on its head um, so this one it was really really good I really love the characters and the plot it's a lot of action and a lot happening and I definitely look forward to reading the second book I think I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars as well and then we have The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee this is the sequel to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue which was a book I loved last year and this was no exception so in this book we get to follow Felicity which is actually Monty's little sister who was the main character in the first book and in this one Felicity is actually trying to pursue her dreams of becoming a doctor or a physician and since so she's living in the times that she is there's no really any female doctors around and she's just trying to get into a good school where she can learn even more about the craft um, so she actually heads out on this trip just to be able to find this guy named Platt she's this well-known physician and try to get a, sort of an apprenticeship with him I suppose uh, but along the way, obviously, she comes across a lot of trouble and a lot of problems and comes across a few pirates or two. And we also get to meet Felicity's old friendhood, childhood friend called Johanna and I really liked her as well. So we have some really great characters. We do get to see Monty and Percy again and there's a lot of action. It was really, really fun. 
and very different from the first book. And they ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. And I also reread a book, and that was Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This was actually one of the first books I read this year, so I read this originally in. January and now I get to wrap up the year by reading it again. So in this one we meet Naiva and Aiden and they're sort of on the opposite sides of this sort of um, magical struggle if you will. So Aiden is one of the renegades who are pretty much these superheroes who run the town after they sort of won the war against the uh, anarchist and Nova happens to be one of the anarchists um, so Nova actually has to go undercover among the renegades to try to take them down from the inside and of course she ends up on Aiden's team and they have to work together and he doesn't know who she is and stuff like that and I love superpower books I love superheroes I feel I find them so incredibly interesting and I love them and also I love the characters I love the plot and once again this book gets five out of five stars because how could I not give it that and of course the entire reason to why I reread Renegades was because I wanted to read Arch Enemies by Mar Marissa Meyer so this is the sequel to Renegades of course originally it was supposed to be a duology but now I've heard it's supposed to be a trilogy instead so I have a little bit mixed feelings about that but more to that some other time. Um, but in this one we get to follow once again Nova and Aiden. A lot of shit went down in Renegades and now you just kind of get to follow what happens after that and there's still a lot of action. Not as much in the first one. Um, you get to follow the same characters and they get into a lot of trouble as usual. You get to see a lot of superhero powers and it's, it's really cool. Um, but I didn't really get the same feeling for this one that I got in the first one. So I didn't rate this quite as high but it was still really really good. So I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. So I read What If It's Us um, by Becky Albertelli and Adam Silvera. And this is their first collab I believe. You get to follow Ben and Arthur and they actually meet at this post office. Our ben is supposed to mail back the sort of breakup box to so his old boyfriend and that's where he meets Ben and obviously it's they are really attracted to each other but they end up not getting each other's number and then we get to follow the struggle trying to find each other again. Uh, it's really cute, it's really fluffy but as always when it's Adam Silvera involved, it's not always happy and when it comes to Becky Albertalli, of course we also have a lot of Harry Potter references because the girl needs that. <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed this one. I was not completely happy with the ending of it, not saying that it wasn't good because it was, I just would have liked it to go a different direction really. Um, but I really enjoyed it, it was a quick read, I really loved it, and the characters was really likeable yet human. Um, so yeah, I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. So once again, Brandon Sanderson because I read and live for him. <laughs> so we have a Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, this was actually one of the first books I finished this month and I absolutely loved it. Um, so in this one we get to meet Spencer and one of the things she's wanted to be for her entire life is this sort of um, fighting pilot to be able to protect and serve her fellow mates and they have actually crash landed on this planet long, long time ago and they want to protect it from this alien species called the Krell. And the reason why Spencer wants to be a pilot so bad is because her dad used to be one. Um, but then one day he was actually branded as a coward because he tried to run away from this really, really big fight against the Krell. And, um, you know, Spencer is therefore sort of not allowed to become one of the pilots, but she actually managed to find sort of a loophole and she managed to get into flight school anyways. Um, this is a sci-fi story as you might have noticed and I have really started to love them so much so I really want to read more. I love Brandon Sanderson. I really like the character Spencer. I mean she's not completely likeable. Uh, she definitely has a lot of flaws um, but at the same time you can't help but love her because she's so human. And yeah, I just, there are so many minor characters that I loved so much. And as always in Brandon Sanderson's books, there's a lot of death and brutal in this. <laughs> so this book had me tearing up so many times, but I loved it so, so much. So yeah, I gave this book five out of five stars if you hadn't figured it out already. And of course we had another Brandon Sanderson book, and this is actually a novella, and this is called Children of the Nameless, and this is actually based on this um, card game, which I can't remember the name of right now, but according to him, you can read this book without having any previous knowledge of the game, which I sure as hell didn't have. <laughs> 
um, but this was a really interesting book. We follow this girl named Tassenda and she has sort of this magical power that when she sings she ends up protecting her family and her village and that's pretty much the no, her destiny uh, but one day they are actually attacked by these mysterious creatures and the entire town ends up being slaughtered and Tassanda actually tries to figure out who did it and why and she tries to you know take out revenge on them so this was a novella and I've always had a little bit of trouble with reading novellas because I feel like you don't really had the time to get to know or get too attached to the characters and I guess that was a little bit with the trouble I had in this book as well because I didn't love any of the characters also at the same time I didn't hate them I was just kind of eh, they're right um there was a lot happening there was a lot of action um and maybe I would have enjoyed it even more if I had known about the game beforehand um but yeah I did enjoy it but I didn't love it so I ended up giving this book 3.5 out of 5 stars and then we have the two audiobooks I listened to this month and the first one being Den Sista Vilan by Mats Alsted, which is a review book that I got from the publisher called Book for Vacant. And in this one we meet Fatima and she actually, you know, has to crack open some cases. And it turns out they're actually looking for this sort of satanic um, sect and they're trying to figure out where they are, what they're doing, and why the hell they're killing off people. Um, it was really good. It takes place in the city I live right next to, really. Um, so I definitely know a lot of the spaces that they were in, and that was a lot of fun. And I really did enjoy reading the books and listening to the book, technically. So I ended up giving this book 4 out of 5 stars. And then I also listened to The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. And this is a book based off of Russian folklore. Uh, we get to follow this girl named Vasilisa. And it's pretty much about her getting to know her dad's new wife. And the wife is trying to get rid of her. And, you know, the fight around that. And I had a really, really big troubles with this book. And it might have been because of the audiobook. I didn't really like it that much. Um, so that might have been why. But I had sort of hard time listening to it and actually, like, you know, get the information into my head. Which is usually not a problem anymore with me in audiobooks. But this one I just couldn't stay focused at and I didn't really get caught up in the story nor the characters although I did like the fact that it was based off of Russian folklore um, but I ended up giving this book 1.5 out of 5 stars. So yeah, those were all of the 11 books I managed to finish this year. It definitely wasn't the sort of big ending that I was hoping to, but it was definitely better than some of the other reading months this year. So hopefully we'll be able to get out of the reading slump for next year, but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, if you have read any of these books, please let me know down in the comments below what you thought about them, without spoiling of course. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give me some thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the little button down below. I hope we see each other in the next one. Bye!